I got into an argument today with the person who told me that my breath stank like shit. <clears throat> well, I said to them, you should choose the person who you argue with then, shouldn't you? I said, and besides, you're wearing a fucking mask. But anyway, um, I'm sensitive in this particular video to the fact that the cat ladies are active at the moment. There's a lot of Renfielding happening. Renfielding doesn't just happen on the woke establishment um, Rona scene. It also happens, you know, out in the Trufer scene. I've just come from watching a really good video by Thomas Sheridan in which he's talking about that. And he's saying certain people who come out of a particular cult group are unable to grasp satire. Another group of people who are unable to grasp satire are psychopaths. This is why those of us who are good at satire, they hate satire. At a primitive level, they know that there's something wrong with satire and that it is operating at an intellectual level that they they can't even reach. I remember I had two teachers. Well, I had one teacher in school who was a horrible, horrible psychopath. And when she would try to be sarcastic, it was just abusive. She couldn't be sarcastic. We There was another teacher in the school and he wasn't our teacher. And it's a shame because I remember he supervised a free class once and he came in and, you know, he was a teacher who had a reputation for good control and for being a competent teacher. He said to one boy down the back of the classroom, come and sit up here. Why, sir? He said, it's nothing personal. I just don't trust you. That, <laughs> I was about 13, that stuck in my mind ever since because I thought it was just a great retort. I thought it was just super. Nothing personal, I just don't trust you. Oh, I said to myself, did he rehearse that one? I never had that teacher for the time I was in school, but by sixth year, certainly, that teacher and I had actually kind of become friends. He and I got on with each other, even though he had never been a, a subject teacher of mine. We had been on a trip and uh, he and I had... You know, and there was nothing gay about it. I, I suspect he may have been gay, but there was nothing gay about it. It was just he and I were totally on a wavelength. And he and I actually went off on one occasion, just the two of us, to do a bit of sightseeing on our own. When we went for coffee, he bought me coffee. You know, there was nothing queer about it whatsoever, nothing noncy. It was just, and you see, this is the thing. You could be 16 and the teacher could be in his late 30s or early 40s. That's not noncy to go for a coffee with somebody when you're 16 and somebody's in their late 30s or early 40s. We see noncery everywhere because it fucking is. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that there aren't people who are well-intended and who are just, you're on, okay, I was 16 and he was in his early 40s. But we, in many ways, he and I, then when we flew back, to Dublin with the school group. He and I were on either side of the corridor of the plane. The two of us were just chatting shit all the way. All the way back to Dublin. And then after that, he and I became friends. And, you know, around the school, we'd talk in the corridor, that kind of thing. And I think, in a way, that teacher watched out for me as well. I suspect. I suspect he may have watched out for me. In fact, I'd be fairly certain of it. But, you know, the psychopaths and the cult victims don't grasp sarcasm. Thomas is talking about satire, but sarcasm is a very important part of satire. I do promise you <clears throat> when I have a little bit more sanity in my life than I do at the moment that I will do a talk about the Shite Shite Toy Show because I'm getting great feedback from it. And it, it, it amazes me, you know, because I did it for the laugh. I did it as a hobby, really. But uh, the feedback that I'm getting from the Shite Shite Toy Show is is incredible. And I do appreciate you know, the support and the praise I'm getting, I appreciate it hugely. hugely. Uh, we had visitors today, unexpected visitors. A truck came up the driveway. And these people, now again, I'm keeping it cat lady friendly here. It's on YouTube. These people were nomadic. And you'd need to be Irish to understand what I mean by that. They were our nomadic brethren. So, hey boss, you want any work done? No. But you've got work going on at the moment. Yes. You see, um, I'll just uh, pause for a second and any Irish person will tell you this. If you're lonely and nobody's calling to the house, you may be isolated, you may be on your own. You may be elderly and nobody calls to your house. The way to solve that is to put a skip in your front garden because you'll get every fucker on God's earth calling to your house if you have a skip in the front garden. So we have a skip in the front garden, I hasten to add, and... You know, because they're having electrical rewiring work done here. You know, it's good to get a building rewired every 55 years. Anyway, up comes the truck. 
you know, you know, the skip in the front garden. It just we've never been lonely. Never been lonely. Anyway, up, you know, hey boss, you having work done here? Uh, y yes, I said. What's this about? Well, sure, you've known us from before, right? And do you have anything done now? No. Can we go for a walk round and have a look at the premises? No. I said, I'm too busy. By the way, I said, have you, uh, and you can, I, I won't replicate the conversation here because the cat ladies are listening. But uh, I said, have you been needle crafted? That was not the precise vocabulary. Have you done the needle craft? Have you engaged in the needle craft? Oh, yes, boss, we've done that. Ha, huh? we've done that. So we have. Because all the clients, you know, the people are going to expect it. Right, I said, roll up the window and get the fuck out of here and don't come back. I said, because we haven't been needle crafted. And uh, I said, we're getting increasingly fussy about who we're allowing around. I have to remember, you see, I'm on YouTube again now. So I have to, this isn't Odyssey. <sighs> Although I'm kind of replicating them onto Odyssey. This is not Odyssey. So <clears throat> I see the possibility... No, I don't see it. It's not a possibility. It's not a possibility. It's going to happen. It, this is going to happen, what I predict. You know, for, because everything that all of us... And that, it, wouldn't it be nice if we got shit wrong occasionally? But look at Gemma O'Doherty and John Waters. I mean, as fluty as Gemma is, she tends to get shit right. You know, whatever she may come out with, she tends to get shit right. So does John. So does Thomas Sheridan. You know? But here's what I'm thinking may be a scenario um, that the coin will flip. Remember that scene in The Wicker Man where they're doing the chop game and all of a sudden and everything is changed. And it is sudden. It is sudden. And I have a feeling that those who have indulged in needlecraft won't be quite so superior a few months from now. Because you know they went down the driveway and the workmen who were there i asked them to come out when these people visited us they were holding themselves up laughing at me you know because i said you know we're fussy i said to these guys we're fussy but who we have here i have a feeling that that won't be a joke and i have a feeling that that won't be a joke sooner than we think okay there may be an asteroid so maybe hidden agendas here but for me, the big agenda that I've discussed on Odyssey, you can go and listen to it there. I don't believe there's anything to detract from that or to make us think that that's not what they want to do. It is what they want to do. It is what they want to do. They've wanted to do it for 100 years at least. You know, so, yeah, OK, there might be a big yoke flying around or an uma uma or that kind of thing. But don't let that distract you. Don't let that put you off course. Don't put them off course. So, um, yeah, um, a while ago, last week, somebody came out to collect something. We're just getting rid of as much shit and junk as we can from here. So there's still a wardrobe to go. Hey, anybody want a wardrobe? Yeah, there's still a wardrobe to go. And my mother said, I think we could find, you know, I don't want to get rid of that wardrobe. All right. I said, we won't get rid of the wardrobe. But I said, tell me this. I said, what do you propose its use for? She said, well, you have a lot of extra clothes, don't you? I said, I'm giving them away. Right. Uh, well, she said, that could be nice in your bedroom. No, I said, because the wardrobe's half the size of my bedroom. My bedroom is very t it's very small. So I said, no, it's not going into my bedroom. I said, I like my bedroom not being cluttered. So I said, proposals for the wardrobe, please. Oh, well, she said, it might be work. OK, I said, I'll give it away to the first person who comes for free. Free to collect. Somebody had said they were going to come, then they never showed up. So what I say to people on adverts.ie is first come, first served. I do not hold on to stuff for people to say, I might come later, boss, ha? Huh? You know, no. you come to take it, you get it. So, you know, then we found out half the stuff that she'd been hoarding was worm eaten. So they just went on to the winter wood pond. You know, the worms will eat all those as well, but probably the cold weather will get there before them. Um... So, yeah, Thomas was talking 
Yeah, no, actually, getting back to, to what happened, a guy came to take two pieces from me last week and, you know, he said he had not engaged in needlecraft and he was not wearing a bad breath muzzle. That's what I'll call them, a bad, you know, bad breath capture. In my case, that's what they would be, except I haven't worn one. The time I did wear one, it stunk. The next, you could smell it the next day. But anyway, you know, he says the Irish people, he says there could be another lockdown. He says they won't tolerate it. He said, this, we're not having it this time. I said, nah, no, look. Now look, Jamie, I said to him, they will tolerate it. He looked at me, he said, they will. Yeah, I said, of course they will. So they're going to tolerate all the power cuts that are coming. Right, they will tolerate it. Okay, they will tolerate it. You know, and they, they just, it, it is a cult thing. You know, Jamie Fletcher says, if you are reciting claims which are simply contradicted by the facts that are in front of you then yes you are a member of a cult you have been you know you are a victim of a cult what do you do with people who are in a cult you just leave them alone just uh, there's no point you know and we're seeing this that this hasn't really twigged among the masses yet because you know even on kind of the lefty to center parts of Twitter they're saying this is a the greatest disgrace ever and it'll bring the government down no it won't bring the government down all right it won't bring the government down and they'll keep voting for them anybody who's left I mean you know we have another general election probably 2024 now I mean <laughs> it's we're coming to the end of October 2021 starts tomorrow October November December so we're into the last quarter of the year as of midnight and there's three years left for another general election. Christ alone knows he'll be there to vote for them. What will it be like? What will it be like? And bear this in mind, Eamon Ryan, our pezzy friend, Eamon Ryan and Martin and Farad Curley's Lurch, 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 and Conehead and Shitty Knickers and Harris and all of those ones. RTE, Tubridy. There was a good thing on Twitter, you know. Pity the poor data centres. They've had such a bad week. I half expect to see a data centre in the Late Late Show telling Tubridy about how oppressed it is. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Um, nobody in this island, I mean literally the 32 counties of this island, is involved in what's going on. I've said this many, many times. I will reiterate it. These people who are in... There was a letter to the Irish Times of some kind. Always in a terrible way where we're at today. Why are you getting yourself upset about this? Why, you know... What's the fucking issue here? Wirra, wirra. Wirra, wirra. What's the... You know, what's the deal? What gives here? Do you think these jokers have any hand in this kind of thing? Or why are you watching even fucking RTE? We watched Daniel O'Donnell the other night and that's far more. There's there's more, you know, there's actually more substance. It was a tribute to Big Tom, Big Tom McBride from Castle Blaney. You know, he was great, Big Tom was. But they were all great. I mean, Big Tom and the group, Big Tom and the mainliners. And they were kind of the last of the show bands. They were doing all that stuff up to the 1990s, Big Tom and the mainliners. There's a good video, you'll see it on YouTube. Uh, Big Tom of the Mainliners in the Glencairn Hotel Castle Blaney and the sound was actually very good the music was very good they had connected the mics of the hotel into the sound card of the video cameras it looked like it was done on kind of a three piece camcorder unit it was a well produced video Big Tom was singing about Castle Blaney and all of that and you know he was on then the other night on Tuesday night on Opry Dura with Daniel O'Donnell I think it was his last TV performance before he died he certainly had become a lot weaker and a lot more frail but you know the people in the audience didn't give a shit because they were there waving their big Tom banners and they were standing and cheering for him and um, they go to see an old man he was in his early 80s I think he was about 82 or 83 when he did Opry Dura they're there out of love and they all looked, I don't know, maybe some of them were normies, some of them were shitheads or whatever. But they looked like nice people in that audience in Derry. Up to there, I think it was 2017. Actually, it was. Do you know why? Sometime after that, I went to Bundoran. And it was shortly before Tom died. They were doing a big Tom 
tribute in the Great Northern Hotel in Bundoran. And like all the big guns came, Daniel O'Donnell was there, Margot was there, Susan McCann was there, Philomena Begley was there, Declan Nerney was there. All the big guns of the Irish scene were there in Bundoran. And I mean, the staff were crying in the hotel. They were emotional about it. They were saying, poor old Big Tom was too frail to be able to even get up or do a number. So they're all basically singing to him. But Big Tom, anybody who's Irish knows Big Tom was a giant in more than one sense of the word in the Irish country and Western and show band scene. That's because he was like Brendan Grace, he was like Declan Nerney, Philomena Begley, Susan McCann. They're all people just who, just a talent coming out of every follicle of their hair and fingertip. Really, really talented people. I realised something that RTE gaslit us about a particular thing. Anybody who's out now, Thomas Sheridan, if you're listening to this, I'd like your opinion on this. For many years, RTE talked about the death of the show bands. The death of the show bands and when the show band thing collapsed. It never fucking collapsed. We'd show, but we still have show bands. It evolved. It evolved into the country and western scene. The show band scene never died. RTE, Montrose had always gone with that. You know, when they've got... Then they get on some um, of our enriched friends to talk about how oppressed they are. Do some, you know, Irish culture night and they have all people who aren't Irish on it. The show band scene did not die out. That's a lie perpetrated by Montrose. I'll say it one more time. The Irish show band scene did not die out. What happened was transport improved, telly came in, radio came in. So the demand for those bands in the 50s and 60s that would go to country halls, like they'd go to Termon. There was a particular place, Termon in County Donegal, which now they've built houses up there, the bastards. But I remember even as a child, Termon was the middle of nowhere you know and there was a tin hut in Termon um, and they'd go up and play the, the show bands would play in Termon Joe Dolan Dickie Rock all of those did Joe Dolan stop did Dickie Rock stop no did Big Tom stop no so it evolved into performing in hotels and into doing weddings and doing theatres in Dublin being on TV so the demand from ordinary country people to go to a Tin Hutton Termon or something in County Longford or Leitrim or wherever, that dissipated because it evolved away. It evolved away into what we have in the country and western scene. The people in the country and western scene, like Susan McCann, Philomena Begley, Declan Ernie, all those ones I've mentioned, even Brendan Grace to an extent, have talent that shines out of them, that radiates. So of course they're not welcome on fucking RTE. Not at all. Not at all. They want Owen McDermott and Durin Garrahy on RTE. And the gaslight about the death of the show bands, that was a direct symptom of Montrose's hatred of ordinary middle Irish people. And my goodness, in that soy corner of the vegan, that vegan soy corner of the Montrose canteen, my goodness, they hate Middle Ireland. Susan McCann is one of the best female singers I have heard anywhere, any time in my entire life. I mean, Susan McCann is above the likes of Dolly Parton or Tammy Wynette or Celine Dion or any of them. Susan McCann is fabulous. And she can sing anything. But Declan Nerney's like that. Declan Nerney's a great singer. A fucking great singer. And they'd get the odd little spot on the late, late ones every three years or so, these ones. But they're performing all the time around this country. I remember a private company did a programme for a, 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 a kind of an international cable station, Irish TV it was called. They went out of business, no shit, because they don't get the subsidy Montrose does from all of you taxpayers. But they did a two-hour thing in the Great Northern Bundor and Margot the Girl from Donegal. And I remember there was lots of chaos and people running around at the time I was staying in the hotel and I was saying, Jesus, this is very incompetently organised. And then I watched the programme and it was super from start to finish. The music, the sound, the photography, the lighting, the presentation, the people, it was superb. I just said to myself, Montrose could not come out with anything of this standard. It was Irish television at its most excellent. 
Margot, the girl from Donegal, was a tribute to Daniel O'Donnell's older sister. <coughs> Excuse me. Daniel's older sister, Margot. Um, and um, she performed, of course, and she performed James Connolly, which is kind of her party piece. And it was fab and it was unpretentious and unaffected and not put on. It was Irish television at its best. You don't see anything out of fucking Montrose that doesn't make you want to cringe. I could die a cringe when I see all the crap that comes from Montrose. So let's anyway get back to topic and talk about power cuts because, you know, uh, they're coming and the Irish people will tolerate it. Those who are left will tolerate it. What do you want to do if you want to be inoculated against power cuts? You want to be power cut proof, right? Will the solar panels work? No, they won't. No, they won't. So what do you do? What do you do? Well, it's easy. You just be willing to spend 45 grand. That's what you do. You'd be willing to spend 45 grand at a minimum. That's not including having to rewire the building to take the fucking solar. That's another issue. Rewiring the building to take the solar. That's separate. So the 45 grand is for the combination of the solar panels and of the diesel Right? And don't be listening to any of these people on Twitter. They've had too much fucking skunk for one day. Ah, God, no. They've had too much thou weed for one day. Oh, sure, you can do it. I don't, can't you do it for fucking two grand? Oh, no, no, can do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't get... There's a type, a type of voice these ones have. It's kind of it crossed between a, an American accent and a flat Irish accent. I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. Um, yeah, you can you can go off grid easy, simples simples, for three grand max four. Yeah, of course you can. Of course you can go off grid for four grand, but that's how it's going, folks. That's how it's going to go. The new aristocrats aren't going to be the people with the big Mercedes or the people with the fancy holidays or the PhDs or that. The new aristocrats are going to be the people who aren't worrying about power cuts. This was avoidable, but the way that you would have avoided this was very, very simple by not voting for Nagale. And then secondary to that, subsidiary to the not voting for Nagale, not voting Green. But sure, but sure, aren't they woke sweethearts, the Greens? And Finnegan, you lose lunch! You lose and so even played a blinder. Oh, excuse me. And the whole nation erupted in a brow of joy when Helen McEntee had a baby. Which is more than can be said for Miriam Lord. So, you know, you, you have what you wanted. You have what you wanted. You wanted communism. RTE told you you wanted communism. You had to do everything RTE told you. So you've got it. You've got communism. You got it. You've got it with bells on and fucking flames. Come. Well, no, there won't be flames coming out of the top because there won't be enough energy. Right? And this is a country... Okay, apparently the Republic has now reached 5 million. But in relative terms, compared to other European countries, we're st- we still have a very low population density. And for some fucking reason now, for some reason, we're going to... Our, our electrical infrastructure is collapsing around us. Oh, but no, but lose legs. He put on a coat. Oh, shit, I could hardly keep, keep the tears in. He put he was going to bust coronavirus, y'all. You know? Ah, yeah, of course you can fucking get off the grid for three grand, you fucking numpties. So it is what it is. And I mean, then they were sort of talking. I was hearing somebody today saying, I got my hair cut. Somebody today was saying, you know, um, there's going to be a shortage of diesel generators. No, there's not. There's not going to be a shortage of diesel generators. I, for about two th- two seconds, I actually listened. Oh, shortage of diesel generators. No, it's not. Those kind of farty diesel generators, gee, like lawnmower sized. Yeah, I would just wouldn't forget about. Them. They're gone. Okay, they're gone already. Forget about those. Don't worry about those. They're not worth a wank anyway. What do you use those for? Keeping the fucking fridge on. You know. And then all the ranola ones. Oh, Aeon. And I, yes, what is it, Niamh? Yes, Aon and Orla. What is it, Orla? Aon and I thought, you know, you're either part of the problem or part of the solution. So we went solar. Oh, you went solar, did you? Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, and by the way, are you aware that that won't carry you in a power cut? Beep boop. Doink. You know, oh, you can't expect us to spend another 20 grand, can you? Because, you know, we have to get Sophie's fees for Alex ready. Yeah, okay, you just fucking rock on, pet, you know? If you want to generate your own electricity, it costs. That's going to knacker small to medium-sized enterprises. You won't, you wait till you see how that affects small to medium enterprises. You wait till you see how that affects the small to medium enterprises when they don't have the electricity. You know, because the electricity is going to a data centre. And I won't say too much more, but I'll let you go now. I remember in the Civil War, reading about the Irish Civil War, and how the IRA had a huge arms dump behind the records office up at the four courts. And the arms dump, apparently, by accident... <clears throat> went on fire and blew up and would you believe it blew up the whole records office of Dublin so all of these trinity won't you fucking know it all of these trinity academics are wandering around the keys crying at all the records that were blowing around the keys (laughs) and there are these documents that dated back to you know 1100 you know 11 Henrik Nordicsman owes the Lord Mayor of uh, Difflin or whatever Dovling you know, two groats and he still hasn't fucking paid it, you know. So, you know, that was a data centre, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? That was a data centre. And, you know, history is a way of repeating itself. <laughs>